Welcome to day 10 of the Marvel Movie Marathon and finally we are leaving Earth and we're seeing other parts of the universe in Guardians of the Galaxy. This is a story of five unlikely heroes joining forces to defeat the blue guy from Captain Marvel also known as Ronan from destroying Xandar with something called an Infinity Stone? What are those? Before this movie came out, the only Guardian I knew about was Rocket Raccoon because he was in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. These guys were almost unknown to the general public and I was very curious to see how their movie would turn out. I had no expectations, it was just pure curiosity. I knew the cast was stacked. They had Funny Man, Chris Pratt, they had a Zoe Zaldana who's a great actress. They had a UFC, no, not UFC, sorry. They had a wrestler by the name of Dave Batista. Haven't seen him in anything, but he looked cool. And then you have freaking Vin Diesel as a talking tree. Yo, count me in. The more I read about this movie, the more I got hyped. Because it, everything was pointing to this being like a huge hit. It was something brand new from the Marvel Universe. These were characters that we've never seen before and this was going to be a space adventure and it just I was excited man I couldn't wait to see this putt baby in action so I sat down with my homegirl Yoko shout out to you and when I watched it I enjoyed it man this was like a fun time at the movies I wasn't in love with it like most people were at the time but every time I watch this film it gets better and better and better no joke I always notice new things I always laugh at the jokes I get emotional when uh during the dramatic parts this movie is it's incredible and the fact that it's made with characters that were largely unknown before this came out it just blows my mind I can say I could talk about this movie for hours the characters are great the soundtrack is phenomenal it's an earworm that's why it sold so well my mom loves this movie specifically because of the music the visuals the cool planets the cool creatures the score like i said i could go on and on let's start with the characters first uh peter quilt star lord huh. he uh he's a great leading man you might know him from parks and rec as andy dwyer and He's just like a buffoon on that show. But here, he flexes his comedic chops. But he also turns into, like, a beast, man. Like, he has the the pecs and the abs going on. You know, it caught me off guard. I'm like, damn, this dude got Diesel for this role. And he's great. And what's good about these characters is none of them aren't perfect. He's a ravager. He steals things. And he's stealing this orb, and that's how we get introduced to all these characters, because the main plot of the story is getting this orb, because it held something very important inside. But he's fun. And then you got Gamora, who is like a, an assassin, and she works for Ronan, who we last saw in Captain Marvel, standing around doing nothing. He gets a little bit more to do here, fortunately. <laughs> And then we learn that he's actually working for the purple guy who was at the end of Avengers. His name is Thanos. And he sends Ronan to find the orb because he wants to get these things called Infinity Stones. What are the Infinity Stones, you ask? What are they? these powerful relics that were created before time itself? And if you get one of these bad boys, you're basically invincible. So it seems that he's trying to collect all of them. He sent Loki to get the Tesseract, which we found out is an Infinity Stone as well, in the Avengers. So in this movie, he's trying to get Ronan to collect one too. But both attempts are thwarted by different heroes in different parts of the universe. It's kind of funny when you think about it. This is uh, when Marvel's long-form storytelling is starting to pay off, or it's starting to built steam I should say because we didn't know <laughs> that the Tesseract and the ether 
were so going to be so important later on down the line. We just thought these were one and done MacGuffins, but no, they are actually part of a bigger plan, which we'll see unfold throughout the rest of these movies. But let me get back to the characters. Sorry for going off tangent. You got Drax the Destroyer who's trying to get revenge for his family. And he turns out to be a really chill dude. He, he's got, he has this anger and he's lashing out at different people because he's hurt on the inside. And he's actually my favorite guardian because once he drops the angry act, he's just a really funny guy and he just loves to fight and battle and he has some of the best lines. It's, it's, he's awesome. He doesn't understand metaphors. He's great. And you got Rocky Raccoon who's also played by a great actor. Bradley Cooper and he's kind of like a raccoon version of Tony Stark <laughs> without the money of course he just has like a huge ego and chip on his shoulder and he's lashing out at people and he's an adorable little creature but he packs a wall up he's always making these bombs and guns and yeah he's like the inventor of the group and then you got Groot played by Vin Diesel who rounds out the rest of this family. <laughs> All he says is, I am Groot, but he emotes with his face and his body language. He, he Compared to someone like the Hulk, he has so much more personality just by the way he reacts to things. And uh, Vin Diesel also does the mocap for him. So, you know, you got Dominic Toretto as part of the Guardians, which is badass. <laughs> Uh, the reason people like Loki so much in the Thor movies is because he's the most interesting character. He has the most depth, the most personality. He's charming. And you never know what he's going to do. You know, that's what was lacking in the last Thor movie. There wasn't a lot of personality to it. But this is the opposite. Every character is bursting at the seams with personality. They're, they're emotional. They got depth. Um, they can fight. You want to learn more about these people. I, I believe each member of the Guardians could lead their own movie without problem. So if you think about it, this movie is like a reverse engineered Avengers. Instead of solo movies coming together, this could be a team up movie with solo movies coming after. But they never do that, which is fine by me because the Guardians work best when they're together. I love all the bickering they do. It's a dysfunctional family who's met with this impossible task to save the universe and it's great it's a really funny movie from it's probably Marvel's like first official comedy because the other movies have jokes and I'm sure but this one the jokes keep coming it's a really funny universe and again we see uh, these awesome worlds Xandar is like a futuristic earth you got Nowhere, which is like this really grungy city, this kind of like underbelly where a lot of illegal activities go on. Uh, the opening planet, I don't know the name, it's kind of like a got a, like a dark, uh, kind of like, has a dark world vibe, but even that is made more fascinating because uh, the action scenes, the action scenes here are great. Uh, you got the fun little scene where the guardians meet and they're fighting over the orb, you got the great prison escape sequence which is funny because the rocket steals a leg for no reason and then the finale the finale is jam-packed with action it's it's a very epic movie for again uh, a comic that mainstream audiences were they did not know anything about and they just throw everything at you and it lands thankfully and again uh, even though the bad guys have depth uh, Yondu, who's like Peter's surrogate father, he tells him everything he knows. He has this really cool arrow that he moves by whistling. Can't do it. I can't whistle in this thing. Ah. Uh. They got Nebula, who is Gamora's sister, and uh, she just wants to show off and <laughs> beat her sister in a fight. And again, man, these characters, they're, 
they're awesome, man. And that's what really brings the movie to the next level. Even the supporting characters got depth. You know, the collector, he collects all these weird things from across the universe. And you want to know his story. But that's the thing. They don't really tell you much. They don't tell you much about how this universe works. They rely on you to be smart enough to just, you know, pick it up as we go along. And that's another plus. You know, there's no scenes of long exposition besides the Infinity Stones. You're going to get, get used to that speech because you're going to hear it a lot more. But they have a pretty funny post credit scene with Howard the Duck. Hardcore fans know that Howard the Duck had a movie in the 80s and it was terrible. But since Marvel can basically put anything on the screen at this point, this is their victory lap. And they can put anything on the screen and they know you'll come watch. They put a Howard the Duck cameo at the end saying, yeah, we know he's lame, but we're going to put him in the movie because we know we can get away with it. And that's what this movie is special. It finally opens the universe to a whole set of brand new characters while setting things up for the future while also being a well-contained movie. <laughs> But if you want to see more of the Guardians, tune in tomorrow because we're going to do Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Thank you for watching.